Hello, this is Science Fiction Snob. Today I would like to snob. talk about Today. David Brin's Uplift series. So, a total of four, uh, six books in the series. I'm just going to go through them, uh, tell you a little bit about them. Okay. All these books, highly recommended. Dave, David Brin, great writer, uh, tends more towards the hard science fiction uh, a little bit. Um, his Uplift world is detailed and interesting. Let me give you a little bit of background about the Uplift world uh, his, and then we'll talk a bit about the books. So in these, the Uplift universe, uh, the universe has been you know, heavily populated for about a billion years or so. Uh, it's filled with all sorts of species and what happens is that uh, uh, people supposedly the progenitors were the first to uplift a, a species which is which means to bring it to uh, intelligence uh, make it smart enough to be sentient so in this universe all the all the various species in the universe they become intelligent by someone else being their patron and raising them up so with the exception of course of humans so in this universe uh, humans have just been discovered I mean it's a little bit in our few present future but they've just been discovered and they are a quote wolfling species they claim that they haven't uh, humans have you know uplifted themselves now uh, some you know this makes them sort of pariahs in the galaxy you know many people you know think humans are arrogant because of this they also don't believe that um, that some don't believe that humans uplift it themselves because it, it's something that never happens. That they think that humans are a, an abandoned species that was uplifted, partially uplifted, and then left alone, which would be a very serious, you know, crime to do in this society as well. So uh, you can see that uh, humans are not very, uh, what's the word? They're not looked upon very kindly. Uh, they're, you know, technologically backward, but yet. Uh, they're somewhat arrogant. So, uh, with the discovery of humans, normally humans would be, they would have been maybe exterminated or taken under wing of some other species. And when you are uh, the, when you're taken under the wing of a species or they uplift you, they're basically responsible for you and they basically can treat you like slaves. They can change your genetic material, experiment on you, whatever they want to do you know, within galactic law. Because they're responsible for you so the only reason humans and this also adds to humans uh, their uh, arrogance the only reason humans are no, were not taken was that humans themselves have uh, had already uplifted two species at the time when they were discovered they uplifted dolphins and chimpanzees so they were already um, you know put into the position of a senior uh, type species but yet they had just been discovered they were way backward um, what else with key information about this uh, universe um, it's very ecologically um, they're like ecological Nazis um, they're very concerned about ecology because you know the whole universe is is the whole galaxies are the five galaxies are all um, completely uh, you know filled with species so you know you have to kind of if you want to move somewhere else you've got to someone else if you want to take over something or live somewhere someone else is already living there they've got to move so the the galaxy is the galaxies the five galaxies are very they're very staid they're very bureaucratic uh there's not a lot of innovation um environmentalism you know in keeping you know uh, your planets pristine is very important there's not much worse that you can do is to foul a planet up uh, what else uh, there's no research done in this in this galaxy all everything that's worth knowing has already been discovered supposedly and the the great library is where you go to uh, you know you just you purchase like a subscription to it and you just go and you can just invent or build things from there because basically everything has been invented supposedly of course, humans reject that, and they kind of do their own thing. But we're still, you know, millennia uh, technologically blackboard compared to other species. So that's the kind of the basis for uh, 
the uh, the universe. So the first book, Sundiver, happens about a couple decades after humans are discovered, and this has to do with uh, this is the only book that happens on Earth. It has to do with uh, beings in our uh, some sort of beings that are living in our sun, and it's kind of a detective novel, and it refers to uh, there's a bit of uh, there's some uh, traitorousness going on with a certain subspecies patri- of of, an, of a more senior species. So uh, it kind of it sets the stage a little bit, gives you some information about this, but it's not directly related to the uplift stuff. So once we move on, the next two books, uh, Star Tide Rising and Uplift War, they kind of happen uh, simultaneously. Star Tide Rising is about uh, the humans decide to set up a, a ship crewed mostly by dolphins and they're going to go out and explore the universe a little bit. So um, off they go uh, and they, in their explorations they find something that could shake up the five galaxies. And then from then on they're pursued by, um, by various other species trying to capture them, get the, the, uh, the secret for themselves, find out what the secret is, that sort of thing. So, uh, very good book. Um, of all these books, I think Sun Diver is my least favorite, but it's it's still good. But Star Tide Rising and Uplift War are excellent. So Uplift War kind of happens at the same time as Star Tide Rising, and uh, meanwhile, while uh, you know this Earth ship is you know hiding out in the galaxy, uh, hiding from people. Uh, there's an invasion on a on a planet that humans have colonized, and there's a big fight there. Um, yeah, it's called an up. They call it's called the Uplift War. Humans are fighting. Uh, one, they're using uh, their Uplift species. Chimpanzees are colonized the planet, if I'm correct, and they are uh, fighting another alien species. So it's really good. Uh, the the alien species in all these. Um, these books are very interesting and very unusual. Uh, you know, Bryn has great, um, he has a great imagination when it comes to thinking up uh, these various uh, species and what they're like. Okay, so the last three books are sort of related. Uh, they, while these last three books go on, um, the, uh, the uh, ship from Star Tide Rising is still trying to avoid the various um, the various uh, races in the galaxy and uh, keep their uh, hide their secret and you know bring their secret to light. So the first uh, Brightness Reef doesn't have anything to do with. Uh, there's no mention of uh, the uh, dolphin ship in there. But um, all three books take place primarily, the, the second two books, let me just say that, will have some reference to the dolphin uh, ship in them. Uh, they'll be talking about what's going on with them. The first book doesn't have any references to that. But all three books have to do with this planet called uh, Jijo. And on that planet, a bunch of species have are illegally living on this planet. So this planet... In fact, the whole galaxy, what this planet is a part of, has been declared fallow. And everybody has been moved out of it, and there's no one living in it. And these guys are secretly, six races are secretly living together in that, uh, in that, um, on that planet. And have been living there, some of them have living there for, I don't know, I think it's, you know, over 100 years and that sort of thing. So anyway, um, as the books move, go on, we find out. Uh, some interesting things about the species, like uh, you know, some of them are not are different than what they were before. Some of them are um, hated uh, by other of the species that live there, but they don't seem to you know they don't seem to be aware of that. They live in generally in harmony. Um, you know, one of the species is a species that was thought to be extinct in a war. Another species, uh, yeah, basically, uh, get, you know, got rid of them all. So. The whole mystery of why they're hiding there, what's going on, very interesting. Um, so all three books basically go in, uh, in in order, and they, you know, they, um, with the exception of the two books where I mentioned where they there'll be some cutbacks to what's going on with the uh, the dolphin ship. Uh, they they talk about the whole story and about how you know about getting uh, 
you know, trying to hide, uh, not be discovered, because they know that if they're discovered on this, they want to live on. The, they're trying to live on this planet in peace. If they're discovered, they are. Uh, they will be. Um, you know, they'll be all be wiped out. They were living on this. You know, in this fallow galaxy on this planet, they're not allowed to be there. Uh, what else? Uh, it's kind of like a, a haven for criminals, right? All these species come and, you know, these six species have all come there at different times to hide out over the last, I think, a few hundred years. They um, use minimal technology because they don't want to have any technological, um, they don't want to have any technological uh, signature from space. So if someone happens to go by, they're hoping to, you know, not be seen. They, they use camouflage nets. They've gotten rid of all their technology in order to, um, you know, to, uh, you know, to hide. Uh, and one other thing is, oh, one other thing is quite interesting. They do. They've set up all their stuff so that it can easily be blown up. This is a good insight into how the, the, the society, uh, the whole universe sort of thinks. So they're hoping that uh, you know, if they ever are discovered, they've got all this, uh, these ways to to return the planet to the, its natural state. So, you know, in one situation, they've, I think they've dammed up a river in order to, uh, you know, build up uh, power uh, for water wheels and that kind of stuff. And they've got a uh, explosive set up to blow up the dam to return it to its pristine state. So they're, they're like, if the galaxy, the, you know, the galactic police, all the various um, species of the galaxy ever find them, they'll blow this up and they'll say, hey, you know, maybe we were bad, but look, We've got it set up so we can return it to its natural state, you know, kind of have a little mercy on us. So, um, yeah, so that pretty much sums up uh, the uh, Uplift series. Uh, you know, when you're playing video games like Stellaris or you hear reference to uplifting a species anywhere, that's from David Brin. He's the one, to my knowledge, that coined that phrase. And uh, people, everyone else stole it from his books, and now it's it's a sort of a, a normal part of, um, you know, our vocabulary where we even talk about you know doing it. And you know, I just read an article the other day about you know people injecting uh, human cells into chimpanzees' brains to try to make them smarter. So he coined that phrase, and you'll see it referred to in other science fiction areas of uplifting species. So, highly recommend the entire uh, series. I think, uh, it's hard to say my favorite, I think uh, Star Tide Rising and Uplift War are my two favorite novels of that, that whole storyline. Um, and when you, you know, you might, you finish these, you should read them in this order, Sun Diver, Star Tide Rising, and Uplift War. But if you finish them, and then you start on the uh, next three, you'll, you'll be reading the first book, and you'll be like, well, what happened to the other guys? What happened to that? That was a, you know, we don't know what's going on. And, but then it'll finally, as you go through, you'll finally get inserted information in. And it's a, you know, it's a good story. So I highly recommend it. So I hope uh, you've enjoyed this, uh, this little recommendation and summary of these books. I hope uh, this gets you to uh, wanting to read them. And if you do, you will not be disappointed. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and all that good stuff, and we'll see you on the next one.